In my opinion, differential calculus is one of the trickiest concepts to get your head around. And I've had a lot of students say to me that they don't really know what they're doing when they differentiate a function. They tell me that they can use the rules just fine, but they don't really know what the rules mean. So hopefully in this video, I can clear that up. Basically, differentiation is just about finding slopes of functions. I have a linear function here on the left, and it is the function f of x equals 2x plus 3. So if I want to find the derivative of that function, I just have to find its slope. There's two ways I could do that. I could read it directly from the equation because the slope is always the coefficient of x. The other way I could do that is by taking two points along my line, connecting them to form a right angled triangle and writing down the rise over the run. The rise over the run here would be equal to 10 over 5 which is 2. So the slope is 2. The derivative of this linear function then is just a constant value of 2. I write that using the no notation f dash x equals 2, which just means that the first derivative of the function f with respect to the input variable x is equal to 2. There is a second notation we can use to describe a first derivative, just like there's a second notation we can use to describe a function itself. I could have described that function using the y equals 2 notation, so y equals 2, 2x two plus 3. And the corresponding notation for the first derivative then I'd use is dy over dx. So the first derivative of y with respect to the input or independent variable x. And that is equal to two, because these two mean the exact same thing. All right, so you might be thinking to yourself, well, finding the slope of a linear function is fine, but what if I need to differentiate a quadratic function or a cubic function or any function that isn't just a straight line? How do you find the slope of a curve and what does the slope of a curve necessarily mean? Okay, so before we go into this in detail, I just want to use a little analogy. Imagine you are looking out onto the horizon. How would you describe the horizon line? Well, maybe you describe it as a flat or horizontal straight line. Except you know that the Earth is a sphere. So the horizon line can't actually be a straight line. It has to be a really subtle curve. But because we are, I suppose, zoomed in on such a small portion of the earth, the curved surface looks like a straight line. We use the same idea when we are looking to find the slope of curves. If I was to zoom in, on a portion of this graph, the zoomed in portion would look like a straight line. And if I could find the slope of that straight line, I would be able to describe the derivative of the function at that particular point. Instead of using an imaginary magnifying glass, however, to zoom in on a portion of the curve, what we do is we draw something called a tangent line to the curve at the point where we want to find the derivative. A tangent line, by definition, only touches the curve at a single point. If you've done coordinate geometry of the circle, you may have seen tangents to the circle, which touch the circle at its circumference at one point only and are perpendicular to the radius. If I was to draw a tangent line, to this curve here at the point, it would be like I extended the zoomed in straight part of the curve on either side, like this. Now, if I was to go and find the slope of that straight tangent line, I would have found the derivative of the function at the point x equals six. So basically, the slope of that line is f dash six. There is one problem here though. In order to calculate the slope of this tangent line, 
and hence the derivative of the function at this point, we would need to know the exact coordinates of two points along this line so we could calculate rise over run. However, we only know the exact coordinates of this single point where the tangent touches the curve. We could, of course, estimate the coordinates of other points along this tangent line, but we would never know if they were the exact coordinates that fit the tangent to that point, because we did just sketch this tangent line and we don't know how accurate our sketch is. So we need another method, and this is where differential calculus comes in.